Hello, this is a lecture video about determinants. So a determinant is a certain number which we could compute for a square matrix. And we will be talking in lots of videos about um, how to think about this determinants, what they're good for, what the general formulas are for them are. And here I've given you the formulas for a two by two and a three by three matrix, just so we have some idea what we're talking about. So the determinant of a two by two matrix is a difference of two monomials. One monomial is the product of the diagonal terms. And the other monomial is the product of the off diagonal terms. The determinant of a three by three matrix is the uh, is this linear combination of six monomials. And in general, there is a formula, and we'll be getting to it in about two lectures. Of course, you can skip ahead there if you want to see the formula. But much more important than the formula is knowing what the properties of the determinant are. And it's also important to know how to think about it geometrically and computationally. But I'm going to start here with just a list of what are the properties. So I'm asking you to believe me that determinants are important and just start learning these properties. And then we will see how they are important and how it comes together. Okay, so first property, if we take an identity matrix, so ones of a diagonal, zeros everywhere else, the determinant is one. I don't have much to say about that, but I want to get it out there. Second property, if we take two columns or two rows of our matrix and switch them. So in this example, I've taken columns K minus one and K and I've switched their order then we pick up a minus sign in front of the determinant. And all the other columns here just stayed the same. Here we did the same thing with the last two rows. And I've showed you examples with two rows with the last two columns and the last two rows, but this is right for any two columns or any two rows. When we switch them, we pick up a sign. Okay. Next property. If we have a, if we pull a scalar factor out of one row, so here I factored a C out from the bottom row and left all the other rows alone, that C uh, pulls out in front of a determinant. And same thing for columns. So if we rescale any row or column by a scalar, we rescale the determinant by that same scalar. And in particular, if you put C equal to zero, you'll see that if the last, that if any of the rows or any of the columns are zero, then the whole determinant will be zero. Okay, and then the last property is one that's a little bit harder to say, but is very important. If we take one row or one column, here it's the last column, and we decompose it as a sum of two vectors, y plus z, when we can make two new determinants, one with column Y and one with column Z. And here, all the other columns just copied over exactly the same. VK minus one copied over here, V1 copied over here, and so forth. Then the determinant on the left is the sum of the two determinants on the right. And the same thing with rows. If this row is y plus z, and we decompose it as y plus z, then we can and split this sum across the two matrices, copy all the other rows over unchanged, so that v1 is here, and it's also here. <clears throat> and, and this determinant on the left is the sum of these two determinants on the right. Okay, let's see an important consequence of the properties we've already seen. If we take one row and add a multiple of it to another row, we don't change the determinant. So here I'm going to take the k minus first row and add c times it to the kth row, and my determinant is not going to change. So let's see why. So my bottom row is a sum, 
And that means by the property we just discussed, we can write this determinant as a sum of two determinants. In the second determinant, we have VK. In the first determinant, we have C times VK minus 1. And I could take that, uh, take that scalar C and pull it out in front of my determinant. And then this matrix has a repeated row. It has the same row twice, so its determinant is going to be 0. So I get C times 0 plus whatever this determinant is, and anything times 0 is 0. So I get that the determinant of this matrix is the determinant of this matrix. In other words, adding C times the K minus first row to the K row didn't change my determinant on the left. Now, remember what the basic of the basic operations that we are we do are when we compute a row reduction. When we compute a row reduction, we add a multiple of one row to another, which, as I just discussed, doesn't change the determinant. We multiply a row by a scalar, which, as I just discussed, reach scales the determinant, and we switch two rows, which switches the sign of the determinant. So every operation that we do during row reduction changes the determinant in a very simple, predictable way. Which means that we can use the row reduction algorithm to compute determinants. And let's show an example of doing that. So here's a matrix, a 3x3 three three matrix. I'm going to compute its determinant by row reduction. Here's the row reduction algorithm. Let's see what I'm doing at each step. In the first step, I switch the first two rows. See? This 0, 2, 10 moved down here. This 1, 1, 8 moved up here. In the next step, I subtract the first row from the bottom row. In the next step, I'm going to take this middle row and rescale it by a factor of 2. Going from this matrix to this matrix, I took that middle row. So now I've got my, my pivot column in the first column, just like I should. And I'm going to make a pivot column in the second column by taking this middle row and subtracting it from the first and third row. And in the final step, I took certain mult I subtracted appropriate multiples of row three from rows two and one. I took five times row three away from row two. And I took three times row three away from row one. And let's see what the big result of all of that was. Every step here affects the determinant in a very straightforward way. So switching the two rows puts a minus sign in front of the determinant. Subtracting one row from another doesn't change the determinant at all, stays exactly the same. Pulling out this factor of two, pulled out a factor of two in the front. Then subtracting the second row from the others didn't change the determinant at all. Subtracting the third row for was didn't change the determinant at all. And at the end of the day, we get to conclude that our determinant, oh, and the determinant of the identity matrix is 1. That's the first property I told you. So at the end of the day, our determinant is negative 2. In particular, notice, if we got to an identity matrix at the end, but the determinant is not 0, because... Uh, rescaling and negating a non-zero number will give you another non-zero number. So if my row reduction ends with an identity matrix, then my determinant is not zero. Now, if my row reduction doesn't end with an identity matrix, what happens then? Well, if I have a, row, a square matrix and it's row reduced and it's not the identity, 
that means that there must be uh, fewer pivot columns than there are rows. So there must be a row with no pivots in it, the bottom row. That bottom row must be zero. So a row reduced matrix, row, a square row reduced matrix, which is not the identity, has a row which is all zero. And remember, whenever a row is all zero, the determinant is zero. So, oh, uh, let me actually write this sentence down. I don't have it on my slide. If the row reduction ends with a non identity matrix, then the original matrix had determinant zero. Okay, the main computational thing you should take away from this is that you can compute determinants by row reduction. And not only can you, but you should. So again, in two lectures, I'll give you a formula, a general formula for the determinant. And that formula will be fine for two by two or three by three determinants. But as soon as you get larger than that, using that formula is significantly slower than doing row reduction. And that's true both for hand computation and for computer computation. When MATLAB or Mathematica or NumPy or anything like that computes a determinant, it is not using the formula we're going to learn. It is using row reduction or a more sophisticated version of row reduction. So this is what I want to emphasize as a computational point is you can and should compute determinants by row reduction. The main theoretical point is the thing that I was pointing out near the end of our last discussion. An n by n square matrix has non-zero determinant if and only if its row reduction is the identity matrix. Now let's remember lots of other good things happen when the row reduction is the identity matrix. When the row reduction is the identity matrix, then A has rank n, which is as large as it could be, uh, because it would have n pivots then, which means there's no kernel, because the bench of kernel is n minus the rank, and its image would be as large as it can be. So matrices with, with non-zero determinant are the matrices that have no kernel and image everything. And then here's just a bunch more things that follow from that. That's the same as saying the rows are when you're independent. It's the same as saying the columns are when you're independent. It's the same as saying the rows span Rn. It's the same as saying the columns span Rn. It's the same as saying the rows are basis. It's the same as saying the columns are basis. It's the same as saying A is invertible. So all these really good, nice properties of square matrices, all of them happen if and only if the determinant is non-zero. And you can sort of think of a determinant as a measure of how much these good properties hold. Okay. That is where we stop for now. Uh, right now, the determinant is a piece of black magic. We haven't motivated it to you or explained why it should exist, but you'll be seeing that in future lectures. Right. Please enjoy them.